watching Pac-12 Bay Area. With the 2017 Pac-12 Beach Volleyball season nearing its conclusion, teams are jockeying for seeds for the Pac-12 championship in Arizona next week. Undefeated USC and Stanford from the farm next. Good afternoon from Stanford University and welcome to Pac-12 Beach Volleyball. This afternoon, the top ranked team in the country, the USC Trojans, put their 55 match winning streak on the line against the Stanford Cardinal. And with a former Pac-12 standout and current professional, Cameron Irwin, I am JB Longslow. God, you are with us. And there are so many student athletes on the sand today with national championships to their credit. You're absolutely right. Not only do we have the back-to-back -back champion, national champion in USC, but on the other side of the net, there are seven out of the 10 starters from Stanford's national championship 2016 run this last year. Now, USC has been out of action for a while. What's the latest on their streaks? USC is full of streaks. They have a 55 match win streak as well as a 25 overall record this year and 103 on that Sarah Hughes and Kelly Clay's number one position. They are just on absolute fire. As for Stanford, we saw them here in a win over Cal a week ago and then they had a busy weekend against a few more programs. They had a great weekend. They ended up getting two out of their three dual wins over Oregon and Boise State. And those wins were really big heading into this USC matchup. It gives them just a little extra lift that they need heading up against USC. And Cardinal head coach Andrew Fuller has great roots with this USC program. We asked what it meant for Stanford to meet the women of Troy for the first time. Uh, pretty familiar with a lot of the players. Um, so, you know, we just want to be playing the best competition. And uh, I know that sounds cliche, but when you're, at, when you're a young program, that's really what you're thirsting for. Um, people should be excited about seeing two of the best teams in the Pac-12 competing and um, two programs that I think are going to be really setting the standard in the years to come. So his rising Cardinal and the team at the top, the women of Troy, Pac-12 Beach Volleyball next from Stanford. You're in your grave. Sixty-eight degrees, a little cloud cover, no wind as we line up for Pac-12 Beach Volleyball number one USC, unbeaten 25-0, and the 12-5 Stanford Cardinal. Cameron Irwin, JB Long, glad you're with us. Take a look at pairs four and five set for first serve, and we join Group number four for Stanford, it's Catherine Raquel and Shannon Richardson. And in the near court, April Bustamante and Joy Dennis for USC. Pair four, here we go. And Bustamante serving and returning from an injury. That's a young pairing. For USC, having great success, 11 wins to their credit in dual action already. Uh, choosing Shannon Richardson on the serve receive for Stanford to begin, and she swings long. So the first three to the women of Troy will play five pairs today. The best of the three matches wins the duel. We're in our first flight, pairs four and five. A little bit later on, one, two, and three, including the reigning national champions. And on the overpass, Joy Dennis at six foot one, a freshman, one of the nation's top beach volleyball recruits. Good choice by Dennis to stay at the net. It's so easy when you see that ball passed off the net to pull, but she stayed nice and at the net and gave her a great attack kill opportunity. Another great sequence as that clips the line, and so USC has had some time off. Had a tournament against Hawaii canceled, so three days of rest last weekend, but boy, they look sharp from the early going. I talked to Anna Collier about this time off, and she said that it is the first time since January the team has had more than three days off. So they definitely flourished in that time. A couple of them went to the river and visited some family. Um, some even went out to Chapel Hill. So definitely a little bit of rest. As a look at Coach Collier, how about why is the serve of Bustamante giving the tandem of Raquel and Richardson so much trouble? 
It's a little bit of a top spin, top spin, side spin serve. So the ball is traveling away from your platform, and that makes things much more difficult. And finally, Stanford gets on the board. Shannon Richardson cross court. She's a freshman from Los Gatos. And so they change at seven with the score six one, Women of Troy. You're going to see different styles of play from Stanford to USC, especially in this pairing. Uh, Raquel and Richardson are a little bit of what we call a small ball team. They're both a smaller defender type player, whereas on the other side of that, we've got some big bangers from Bustamante and Dennis. They're going to be taking some really strong rips at the ball. And doesn't that put all the more onus on the Stanford serving? They really have to get at it from the service line. They do. They need to get them out of system. And there's a miscue. Another point for USC. The Stanford tandem had a five-match win streak snap last time out against UW. They're now 10-7 and seven on the year. Uh, USC winning 7-2 here, despite that point for the Cardinal. Good news for Stanford on the other court. The tandem of Bowen and Anderson are off to a 5-2 advantage. So first flight underway, two pairs, four and five, going between the women of Troy and the Cardinal. That was a nice serve from Shannon Richardson. It gets the Cardinal, another score. What a great serve. Richardson just puts so much pace and goes deep into that seam in between the two passers. So it makes it much more difficult to one, communicate, and two, you've got to move your feet into that ball. It goes short on this serve and chooses Bustamante. Able to get the side out. And one thing I observed, we were here a week ago and the winds were gusty up to 20 miles per hour. But the technical side of the game is really, really advanced today. Much cleaner, much more in system than what we saw against Cal. When you want to talk about clean, that shot on the cutty was just incredible from Bustamante right next to the net. No, 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 no. Richardson gets a wide swing here. Bustamante able to keep it alive. And now Raquel off the tape, and she scores for the Cardinal. And we're going to need to see a lot of that for Stanford to take this set because they have to attack the sidelines when Dennis is pulling or Bustamante is pulling they have to go at areas where it's more challenging for a defender to get to and most of the time that's going to be the sidelines and the back line of the court. I mentioned Stanford needs to serve aggressively and effectively but they've missed a couple deep in this first set. Yeah there's a balance between having to serve tough and serve in, and right now they're just on the opposite side of that. Typically you want to have the same number of aces as errors, so that means right now they're 0-2 for, or they actually they had one ace, so they're 1-2. One, one more ace and they're right up back to that 500. Now they're back within four at 9-5 on another change after a slow start. Another thing to note about the USC pairing in the four eight. spot is that typically this pairing before, about March 28th was the last time they had played together, they had been having a dedicated blocker. Now here you're going to see what, again, it's called a split blocking system where both Dennis and Bustamante will be used as blockers. Beforehand, Dennis was sitting in the backcourt playing defense. Watch this ace serve. Right up the seam again from Shannon Richardson. Considering a human biology or engineering major, wants to go on to be a doctor. Great stab. Not once, but twice. Joy Dennis puts it down. And I love that Stanford is digging back and digging their heels into the sand, wanting to dig some balls. Unfortunately, that one just got a little too far up to the net and Dennis wanted the, that second opportunity. A freshman from Cypress, California by way of Keystone Academy where she was a four-point student. How about that stab to keep the point alive? All too tight to the net and a point for Stanford. Now when that blocker is pulling, you saw Dennis pulling back off the net. That's typically when you want to attack them. It's really hard to be moving backwards and try and dig a ball there, but she did a nice job. Nice hit from April Bustamante, a sophomore from Redondo Beach. Meanwhile, on 
Court number two, the five pairing of Kremer and Belton for the women of Troy. They've rallied for a 9-8 advantage. First sets to 21. Best of three sets if necessary. This team of Belton and Kremer have done some incredible work this season. They're 23 and one in duo matches, 27 and three overall. Now, if you dissect that just a bit more, those three losses, two of them were in pairs meetings and they were to their own teammates. So this team has really done some work. Dennis turned to serve and Bustamante gets another kill for USC. They've been in control from the beginning of the opening set. Now USC back to their opening day starting lineup, if you will, getting Sophie Bukovec at the twos and April Bustamante here at fours back from injury. And Coach Collier believes it is clearly their strongest, which is exactly what you want here in mid-April. The women of Troy out to a great start and enjoying it every hop along the way on the farm. Congratulations to the W. Welcome back to Stanford, USC, the number one rated team in the country, making a road trip here to the farm for the first meeting between these two programs. And the four pairing of Dennis and Bustamante, we've been following for the start of our program, and they've got a comfortable lead on Raquel and Richardson over there on court number one. So as we come out of the timeout on court number two, let's introduce the five pairing. And it's Jenna Belton and Joe Kremer for USC, and Courtney Bowen and Kat Anderson for the Cardinal of Stanford. So Belton and Kremer with that dazzling 23-1 mark in duels as you broke down for us. They became the first five pair to win Pac-12 Beach Volleyball Pair of the Week back in March. And they rallied from down 5-1 early in this opening set. Now plus four over Stanford. Kat Anderson gets a hack at it here and misses deep. talking to coach Anna Collier about this USC pairing. She said one of their greatest strengths is that they just absolutely love each other and they love their team and they love their university. And that shows in their play. Uh, Kat Anderson scoring for the Cardinal. Freshman from Everett, Washington. And you're going to see Kat getting a lot of the balls out of serve receive. She's the smaller of the two in this pairing at 5'9". So she's going to try, they're going to test her and see what her attacking ability is like. How about the high line shot over the 6'4 block of Courtney Bowen. It's unique to see a player that tall and that talented on the indoor side transitioning outdoor. Yeah. Out here on the fifth court. And especially in that five spot, you're used to seeing a little bit more of the smaller type defensive players in those five pairings. But I have a feeling for USC, they play at such a high level so frequently that they're, they're not going to be so much surprised yeah. by that. The depth and talent for USC, again, with only one loss, three sets against LSU in early March. An ace or a mishandled serve here. Delivered by Joe Kremer. Take a look at the receive side. Kat Anderson just looked like she was not tensed right before the serve. Now there are different approaches in serve receive. Some like to be flexed is what they'll call it. And that means you're taking a prep step and kind of getting your body ready to right, go. Man. Some like to be a little bit looser. Um, when you have someone with incredible serving pressure coming at you, you kind of got to be a little bit more flexed or you're going to be slow on that serve receive ball. Uh, Stanford group at 13 and 4 on their dual season. They bounced back from a three set loss against Cal, which we had for you on Pac 12 Network last week, to defeat Oregon, Boise, and UW last weekend. So a good weekend of action for them around the holiday. They had a really solid season so far 13 and 4 on the season. They had the best record for Stanford up to date, except for there is now one other pairing, and that is the number two pairing has now moved their way all the way up to, to that 13-4 and four record as well, doing some work for Stanford. 
All right, so we'll leave the five pairing with Kremer and Belton plus seven in that opening set. Dennis and Bustamante perhaps closing in on the first set win of the day as we join pair number four and Stanford scoring as we do Raquel and Richardson. On your left, Shannon Richardson, a freshman serving. Uh, mishandled by Joe Dennis, a fellow first-year player for USC. And now that's an adjustment I've been kind of waiting to see Stanford make at first. They were serving Bustamante. However, a lot of teams have been challenging Joy Dennis instead. One of the things she's been working on a lot is her serve receive. A win over on two there and came up long. So another point to the Cardinal. They stay on serve, back within seven now. Denison Bustamante looking to get to 21 to take this opening set. And again, trying to hit the seam and instead a service error. And it takes us to our first set point of the duel. Dennis and Bustamante, the four pairing. And now that's three missed serves on Stanford's side. And I know they want to challenge on, from that service line, but just a little too much. How about that overhand dig? Pure reaction. And Bustamante gets a point out of it. And Dennis and she take the opening set, 21-12 in the four pair. They just make it look way too easy. A really high skill level. Again, perfect conditions, totally still. So a lot of strategy and technique on display. It's not just about keeping it in play today. And Kremer and Belton in control here as we go back to pair number five with Anderson serving. I like the change up on Anderson serve. She's serving deep, she's serving short, challenging USC serve receivers to have to move their feet. And back to her feet here. This is Joe Kremer. Doug cross court. And looking for a pocket. Unable to do so, another for Stanford as their rally continues deep in this opening set. Nice idea. I love the over on two behind the back. You can see Kat Anderson wouldn't have been able to get there, but they've got to execute that and keep that ball in play. Kremer again. Looking to get over the block of Bowen. What a job by Courtney Bowen. Oh my goodness, and that is what 6-4 will do for you. That ball was practically a foot behind her head and she was still able to play it back. A long serving sequence here for Anderson as she continues to look for her spots and gives it back to USC with a set point coming on the change. Now, one thing we're going to want to look for in this USC pairing at the five spot is that these two players have been really focused on playing together. So Coach Collier said they have to imagine a string be tied between their two belly buttons. And when the, there's a dig, the setter has to release and follow that defensive ball and player wherever it will go. Anderson keeping the Cardinal alive. And you got a shot of our good friend Dane Blanton advising this five pairing for the women of Troy on that changeover. I think the great part about watching both these programs is how much firepower in the coaching ranks they're exposed to. So much experience and insight. Uh, Dane, when he's not on the sand with USC, spend some time with us at Pac-12 Network. I actually talked to Dane just before this match, asking a little bit about what he brings to this USC team. and. He and Coach Collier both said he brings a ton of experience and also just being able to put himself in these girls' shoes in terms of, hey, I've been there, I've played these matches, I know what it feels like to feel this fear or to feel the dominance. Either way, they just love Dane Bland. Uh, Kramer and Belton take the first set, 21-17. Markets can be very unpredictable. Pac-12 Beach Volleyball is brought to you by State Farm. Get to a better state. Cameron Irwin with her billboard debut. Nice <laughs> job with the State Farm, Cameron. 
someday I might with get our... to stand with. Someday I might get to sound quite like you. <laughs> I'm just. I'm not going to try and break down any beach volleyball here. I'm just keeping score and emceeing as we go back to pair number four, where Dennis and Bustamante for the women of Troy won the opening set, 21-12, tied at five in the second set. Let's go back to court one. Choosing Richardson on the serve receive. Great pull by Dennis. I love the aggressiveness from Richardson on that over on two. Yeah, what a shot from Bustamante. This is a really nice pairing with she and Dennis. And what's interesting is Dennis is the highly recruited freshman, but Coach Collier says it's actually Bustamante who has as much upside, she told you in the program, as anyone on this roster. Yeah, she said Bustamante could potentially be one of the best players to come through USC if she continues to improve like she has this season. Now, she struggled a little bit with some ab injuries, which is why you've seen her in and out of that lineup. But when she's going, she is just focused so much on her improvement. Born in Buenos Aires, majoring in communication at USC. She and Dennis have a two-point advantage as Dennis serves. Looking for the deep line and missing. Dennis played two years of club for Elite Beach Volleyball in Manhattan Beach. A year with Wave Volleyball in San Diego as well. Uh, going for the big kill there. and Caught the net instead. So tied at seven on court number one. It's our four pairing. And that's when you have to know when to live and when to kill. That ball was set a little bit too inside. Dennis didn't have her feet quite to the ball. She's got to be able to get in there and take a nice elevated high swing. Uh, USC coming off its longest layoff of their 2017 schedule. So as they resume here at Stanford, 25-0 this season, 55 match unbeaten streak. Off to a good start with the opening set on both courts of the first flight that time. Dennis had all she wanted. That was a bit of a risky pull by, by Catherine Raquel, and you can see it. It was crushed just right at her. When that set is all the way up to the net, you cannot be pulling on Joy Dennis, or she will do that to you every time. Well, Raquel tried to go over on two, and USC was ready for you. <laughs> just for a couple of young players, their instincts are so good. Their instincts are good, but also just their physicality is so good. You look at the difference in size just between the two teams, and it doesn't it doesn't say it all, doesn't tell the whole story, but it does tell part of the story. Their ability to get up and rip at a ball compared to Richardson and Raquel is that's that's a huge difference between these two. 10-7 uh, their lead in the second set. Let's check in on the five pair of Kremer and Belton. 21-17. We covered their first set victory. And now 6-3 underway in the second. First flight volleyball here at Stanford. Another unreturnable serve, this time delivered by Bustamante. And coach Collier, the 2014 ABCA National Coach of the Year. First collegiate head coach to reach 100 victories. And she's got a great staff, always has. That's a line shot, and the transition's just so smooth for the women of Troy. And I know we've said it before, but their ability to hit the exterior of the court and hit the lines is just incredible. That's just pure ball control. Perhaps sharpened by a week of training and a little bit of lifts and rejuvenated legs at this time of year as we prepare for the final week of the regular season and then the Pac-12 championships in Tucson beyond. All right, for the second set, an exhibition match on four Coach Collier one, said she just two. doesn't think there's another team. There's on no way two, they, no they can train as hard as USC seven, does. Five. Teams will come out or people will come out to practice and see their 45-minute warm-up and think that that's the entire practice. Little do they know, that's only the warm-up. Uh, Richardson did all she could with the dig, but unable to find the shot and so another point for USC on the change there in firm control set number two the four pairing the women of Troy dancing their way through the first flights here on the farm it is go time for pay at 7:30 on pac-12 network 
Number one USC with opening set victories in both courts of our opening flights here at Stanford. Just under 70 degrees on a perfect day for beach volleyball as you get a look at head coach Andrew Fuller, I really enjoyed his comment to you, Cameron, about you know the loss to UW and how they were on a good stretch, but sometimes winning mass dysfunction. What do you mean by that? What he means by winning mass dysfunction is that when things are going well, when you're getting those Ws, it's hard to look back and think, well, what were we doing wrong? What do we need to improve on? And so over the weekend, this team had wins over Boise and Oregon, and Oregon but they had a loss to UW, and he said the UW loss couldn't have helped them more because it, it enlightened them into things that they needed to work on moving forward. Uh, Chris Cook and Lauren Fendrick, his staff as well, part of the great group here on the farm. And Dennis and Bustamante in the driver's seat, second set. Now 15 to eight as we join court number one once again. Mother Julie played volleyball indoors at Cal State Dominguez Hills. Majoring in psychology in Los Angeles. Shannon Richardson drops a point in for the Stanford Cardinal back within six. Shannon Richardson really likes that cutty shot cross court. If I were USC, I would try and take a stance and be aware of that a little bit more towards that cross court angle. Elevation from Dennis just dumps in another kill as the block peeled off. Good body control from Dennis. That ball was just about to head on the other side of the net. She just gave it a little extra effort. And now she's up as the blocker. Oh, nice score off an errant set. Richardson able to make something of it. Now, I'm not sure that was quite an errant set. It almost looked like they were trying to force that ball to the pin. That's a different approach, um, and they call it kind of, it's a play in beach volleyball if you like to attack from the exterior. It looks like that's an adjustment maybe Stanford's trying to make. And Dennis beats the block. Side out USC. Just leaving a little bit too much line open on that side of the court. Joy Dennis has been able to attack that line just a few times, even when the Stanford block is meant to be blocking that line shot. And Cardinal insist I'm unable to score. And so Dennis and Bustamante closing in on a two sets victory here on the change. Court number one, four pairing, USC and Stanford. At this point, I would just really like to see Raquel and Richardson try to work on a few different things. And you kind of have to just think about that next point that's right in front of you when there is an eight point differential. Hit the reset button, get back to zero, zero in your brain and just start to compete again. I look for the side out on two, instead blocks. April Bustamante joining Dennis in kind of the split blocking system. Yeah, there you see Bustamante at the net instead of Joy Dennis, who would usually have to run all the way up to the net. They've done it They've on and off throughout these two sets, actually. And now the reason behind this split blocking system is that Coach Collier wanted Joy Dennis to get a few more defensive reps to help with her serve receive. So with Allie Wheeler, who she had been playing with in previous weeks, they were also working on that split blocking system so she could get blocking and defensive reps in. Uh, this duo looks so good together. Could you see them advancing up the courts as their careers continue at USC together? I absolutely think so. I think there are multiple teams that you will be getting to see in future years at USC. Even though there are five seniors, it's going to allow for some major changeover heading into next season. Um, some of those teams, uh, Kremer and Belton, are going to be another team that are going to move their way up the ranks. Well, just a week ago, we had a superstar here in attendance in the courts dedicated in her name, Carrie Walsh Jennings, a Stanford product, was our guest during our Pac-12 Network broadcast, but just a really special afternoon a week ago as Stanford earned a dual victory over the Cal Golden Bears. And Bernard Buer, the director of athletics, with some words. Itself. On behalf of our coaches, our student athletes, and the administration here at Stanford, we just say we're so thrilled to have you back. We're thrilled to dedicate this court in your name and in your honor, and, and rightfully so. 
And Kerry Walsh Jennings Court here on the farm at Stanford. And we pick up the four pairs on match point number one for Dennis and Bustamante. They do not seem much concerned about the outcome of the second set as Bustamante dances her way to the service line. I think the ref just had to blow her whistle to let them know to stop dancing. And Bustamante with the first chance to kill it. Great read by Richardson. And she keeps Stanford in it. Richardson does a really nice job on those sharp shots at the net. And it's something she kind of has to do as a smaller attacker. She's not getting up and ripping at the ball. So her ball control has really done some work for this pairing. Match point number two, second set. Dennis on the serve receive. And she crushes one, cross courts. And Dennis and Bustamante, 21-12, 21-12, earn the first point for USC of the duel. And even though this pair has not played together since March 28th, you cannot tell at all what a beautiful set from Bustamante, that high apex set up and down, and just, I mean, Dennis putting the exclamation mark on that first point of the duel. All right, so one nothing USC. The women of Troy also took the opening set in the fifth pairing, courtesy of Jenna Belton and Joe Kremer. And we rejoin court number two with the women of Troy holding a four-point lead in the second set. Picking out Kat Anderson on serve receive. Bowen wants to go on two and does. Now that is something this pairing will do very frequently with Bowen being 6'4". She can attack from such a high point. Kat Anderson is going to try and get her as many opportunities on two as she can. A sophomore from Brooklyn, New York, back to serve. Uh, well placed there. Joe Kremer over the top of the block. And so we have another guest with us today, Lauren Fendrick, between flights, volunteer assistant coach with Andrew Fuller. We'll talk the state of Stanford Beach Volleyball, some other topics around the sport as we get set for flight number two in the top three pairings between USC and Stanford. Here's Kat Anderson. And Belton takes a left-handed cut. Some net contact there it looked like from Bowen, and so a point for USC. And I just love the fact that this pairing has not only a right-handed attacker with USC, but also a left-handed attacker. It brings such a different look on beach volleyball. And that means that if she's playing on the right side, that allows for great angles in terms of attacking. Goes down the line here, and another lefty kill. Kremer and Belton within two. Uh, Joe transferred via Notre Dame, but she's from Southern California originally. Pacific Palisades prepped at Harvard Westlake. Uh, 19 13 on court number two. And as they wait to finish, we look ahead to Bear Down Beach. Hope you'll join us on Pac 12 Network with all of our coverage from the Pac 12 Championships, Tucson, Arizona. Man, that is to be such a fun competition. So many great teams will be at that Pac-12 championship. April 27th, 28th, our coverage begins at 9 a.m. Pacific, 10 Mountain, here on Pac-12 Network, using your Pac-12 Now app, always at pac-12.com. All right, so Belton and Kremer back to the court, looking to finish up a straight sets victory over Bowen and Anderson. Now, if Bowen and Anderson are not able to pull this out, which at 19-13, it's not looking like it's going their direction, this will be their first loss in three matches right, after this weekend. USC is up 1-0 in the duel. Next match matchup on court number one, USC is up 19 to nine. A long run for Bowen, and she cannot get there. And a different look serving at Bowen. 
instead of Anderson challenging bow and serve receive. So Jenna Belton has the honor match point number one. And Bowen mistimed her jump, and that's how it ends between the five pair. And USC takes both courts on the first flight, and they've got a 2-0 lead in the duel. All right, so we'll step aside, back with Lauren Fendrick on the other side, and prep for flight number two, which includes the top pair in the country. Every athlete has a personal best, a best round. sweeps the opening flight they get both courts four and five for a two nothing lead on the cardinal here in our session break at stanford the first meeting between the women of troy and the cardinal kremer and belton 21 17 21 13 and dennis and bustamante 21 12 21 12 over raquel and richardson for the women of troy all right your reaction to what we've seen so far you know, it's, the matches haven't been too tight so far. I would love to see a little bit more service pressure from Stanford trying to really challenge that USC serve-receive and get them a little bit more predictable. All right, let's bring in our special guest here. Lauren, come on in. We'll do this on the fly. Why not? It's live TV, and we're between flights here at Stanford. Got a headset for you and everything. So you just let us know when you can hear us, and then we'll get started. All good? That sound okay? Sounds good. All right, great. So Lauren Fendrick is our guest, and uh, first flight didn't go your way, of course, but what are you looking ahead to here in the second for the Stanford Cardinal? Yeah, um, you know, this was this is a great matchup against a great, experienced team, and uh, it's a really good test for us as a young, newer program. Um, our girls are generally less experienced, so it's a good opportunity for us to put into play some of the things we've been practic practicing and working on. And I'm really excited to see this next flight. Um, I think our girls can really uh, show some surprises here. And I, I'm excited to see how they respond to the challenge. Now, speaking of the next flight, you got a chance to play with Sarah Hughes in Fort Lauderdale at the Swatch Major Series. So what kind of insight can you give to your team now that you've played with Sarah Hughes? <laughs> well, she's a really good player. <laughs> Uh, phenomenal teammate and, and partner. It was such a blast playing with her in Fort Lauderdale. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to see Catherine and Jenna uh, go against her and uh, get that experience. I mean, that's how you get better is playing against tough people like Sarah. So I'm excited to get for them to get that exposure and see how they line up and just be present, play in the moment, and do, you know, play their best, best brand of volleyball. Now, we can't skip over the fact that you were a 2016 Olympian. So what kind of uh, transition or kind of what can you give your girls go moving forward from your experience at the Olympics? Oh, man. Um, gosh, it feels like they give me more than I give them. But um, it's been fun. They're such rad people. And I love coming to practice every day. They make me laugh so hard. Um, and... I, I honestly think that they teach me more than I teach them. So um, I'm still learning uh, my coaching, you know, presence and philosophy and stuff like that. But uh, I think just getting to know them and um, they, I think, and I hope they trust me and that I've been there and, and that I know what, uh, you know, the struggles you go through with uh, daily practice. So it's, it's fun. It's really fun. Do you ever get to play against them in practice? Do you ever hop in? and All the time. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What a fun experience for those awesome student athletes. Oh, for me, you try to get a high line over Courtney Bowen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What an asset to have on court number five. It's been fun to watch that group over the last couple of weeks. I uh, saw in that montage a picture with your husband as well. Just give us a sense of work-life balance here for Stanford Beach Volleyball. How much goes home? How much stays here on the farm? Uh, you know, we're kind of used to this. He coached me for the last four years, so we've been traveling the world together. Um, but it's fun. It's a fun experience. We get to... So I, I end up waking up at night thinking like, oh, man, I wish I would have told Jenna this, or, you know, I can't wait to work on KP with her blocking on this. And, and so <laughs> I'm learning the balance. He has a really good balance uh, of separating the two, and I'm still working on that. Um, but it's been fun. It's been really fun. Uh, we enjoy beach volleyball. It's sports given me so much. So it's a really integral part of our life. And, and 
it is, we do take it home sometimes, so, <laughs> but it's fun. Well, we can't wait to watch the top pairing. I mean, it's number one USC, it's the defending national champions, but getting to know Catherine and Jen a little bit, they seem to have great chemistry. You've told us that they're at their best when they're giggling. Will we see some giggles from them <laughs> against uh, what is right now the reigning championship team? Honestly, I hope so. I hope that they feel free and present and are just in the moment. That'll be a fun match to watch if, if there's some giggles. Well, thanks for providing some insight on Stanford and USC here between flights. Great to see you and chat with you. Thank you so Pac much for having Network. me. Okay, great. Have a good rest of your season, too. Thank you. Or right. just a week away again from those Pac-12 championships in Tucson. The Trojans with a 2-0 lead on the Cardinal after two matches. You need tires. You don't want you crave. Welcome back to Stanford, and a special thanks to Lauren Fendrick for being our guest. Between flights, it's USC 2, Stanford nothing as we prepare for the final three matches of the day and take a look at the team championships from the ABC era and now in the NCAA era and USC back-to-back -back, 2015 and 16 in Gulf Shores. Anna Collier said this is the end game for them for this season. The ultimate goal is to get that third and consecutive title of national champions. Will they be unbeaten as they go to those championships? We shall see what happens here the rest of their week. They've got a monster one. Doubleheader set against Long Beach State and Bakersfield on Thursday, Cal Poly and UCLA on Saturday as well, even before those league championships. So a look around the facility here on the farm. It's turned out to be a gorgeous afternoon after there was uh, rain in the area this morning for the first half of the day, but now nearly 70 degrees. And we get set for flight number two, which is loaded with USC seniors. They call these seniors the Fab Five, and for good reason. If you look at the com combined total of wins from these five seniors, and now some of them have played together and earned those wins, but 639 and 86 in their time at USC. That is just an outrageous number. And if you take an even deeper look, especially that one pairing, I mean, just doing phenomenal things. 155 and 11 for Clays and 164 and eight for Sarah Hughes. I mean, this team is just unstoppable. We'll certainly keep a close eye on those All-Americans and national champions as all three courts get underway here in flight number two. Catherine Plummer and Jenna Gray, the opponent for Stanford, here on the top court. And a line shot for the Cardinal. Jenna Gray collects the first point. She's a freshman from Shawnee, Kansas, pairing with a freshman from Southern California and Plummer. And those are the kind of shots Stanford is going to have to take against Clays and Hughes in order to put up a real challenge for them. They're going to have to hit those lines. They're going to have to hit the deep corner and really focus on clean shots and being aggressive with them. Choose Gray on the serve. Got to go on two with that touch off the block. And they do effectively. Catherine Plummer puts it away for a 2-0 lead. Catherine Plummer, the national freshman of the year on the indoor side and national champion. She can really get up and just crush a ball. Just missed. I mean, First look at Kelly Clays, a senior from Fullerton, part of that Fab Five. Closer look at Jenna Gray. Now a fun thing to note about this Stanford pairing is that Jenna Gray is a setter on the indoor side, but Catherine Plummer also used to be a setter. She's now playing outside for the indoor team, but both of these girls just have incredible talent in terms of setting ability. So you'll see them move it around and use their hands frequently. Yeah, how about that to see the 6'6 Plummer hand setting on the beach as she does here. A great advantage as her teammate tried to hit the seam and missed long. So side out USC, the women of Troy in the top quarter record of 30 and 1, 24 and 1 in duels and that only loss in their most recent trip, a blustery day, 25 mile per hour wins, a loss to St. Mary's. And according to Collier, the coach at USC, she said, wind can be the ultimate equalizer, not to take anything away from that St. Mary's team that, that beat USC's number one pairing, but it really played a big role in that 
loss to St. Mary's. How about the block of Kelly Clays, a three-time national champ and the reigning Pac-12 player of the year. Nice job on delaying here. She sees that Gray is not necessarily in the greatest position to take a hard driven swing and delays that block able to go up and penetrate and get that block point. A winningest pair in USC history over the course of their three year relationship now in the lead on the top court. And another block from Clays. And you'll see it again. She does a really nice job staying disciplined, staying at that net, waiting to see where the set goes for Stanford. And it goes over the net. She's able to just go up and get the easy point. Court number two has Bukovec and Wheeler with a narrow lead. Check in on them later in this flight. Clay is able to get through the block of Catherine Plummer and score again for the women of Troy. You're seeing Stanford go at Clay's frequently, either in serve, receive, or pulling off the block. And it's just an attempt to try and get them a little bit out of sorts. A nice serve down the line. Clay's couldn't capitalize there, so side out to Stanford. What a great set from Hughes, but he, just being a little bit too careful was Clay's on that cross court shot. It's a tough ball coming back over the back side of your shoulder, trying to go cross court with it. No no Clay's in system scoring again off the retreating plumber. Good idea to pull as Clay's is coming a little bit too far off the net to get a straight down swing, but Plumber's got to be able to control that ball. Our fans in the number three matchup on court one, USC is in the lead four to three. In the number two matchup on court two, USC is in the lead seven to five. What a dig from Hughes. Oh, the whole point. Just phenomenal. This is such fun volleyball to watch because both sides are just trying to crush the ball as hard as they possibly can. And they're both able to dig and transition out too, so this has been fun volleyball so far. That misses on the attack from Jenna Gray, so 9-4 USC. Jenna Gray just not quite getting her feet to that ball, so she's jumping into the court, which means all of her momentum, every everything directionally is heading too far to that outside of the court. Uh, clever move on two, just failed in the execution. Catherine Plummer missing an open court, and so they'll change at 10-4 USC. Some quick facts on Clays and Hughes. The 2015 ABCA Beach Champions in terms of pairs. Now, there was not a pairs championship last year, but they were the Pac-12 pairs champion. I mean, th you can't say enough about looking at this team's record. So if we go beyond what you're seeing on screen, is this team, I asked Collier about what's the legacy they're going to leave beyond the record. And she said that both Clays and Hughes were Fab 50 recruits coming out of high school. And they were some of the first ones to avoid the indoor side and go straight to beach and be only beach volleyball players. Uh, so in terms of tradition, they kind of set the standard across the landscape for collegiate beach volleyball. Now on the USC program, she also said she didn't think that she could have built a culture like she has in the past five to six years at USC without these two players, their leadership, how they approach practice, how they approach competition. They're, you just you can't say enough about them. Yeah, Hughes is a captain for a third straight season. I found it interesting what coach told you about the way she sets her lineup and the fact that Sarah has predicted it correctly without fail because she understands all the reasoning behind how you set pairs and then set the lineup within a program. And to take that for the thought further, when USC is doing their lineup, Collier will actually ask the girls to do a poll and say, where do you see yourself in the lineup and where do you see everybody else? And most of the time, like you said, Sarah Hughes has gotten it right every single time. A big swing there from Jenna Gray out of the timeout. When you're playing a team like Clays and Hughes, you just have to go for it. There's, there's no room for, ten, for tentativeness against this group. 
A little gust of wind for the first time today. Now well executed by Catherine Plummer. Now we've seen her do that a few times, missing a couple exterior, but that time finding the deep corner and a nice job catching USC a little bit off guard. Prep National Indoor Player of the Year and Beach Player of the Year. That's a first across our landscape. A quick one for USC is Clay's response. And tit for tat there. Little wind playing into that. Ball pushed a little too far to the exterior on that serve receive, so Clay's just takes advantage and puts it over on two. Serving and blocking there. What, what do you say about the jump serve of Kelly Clays? <laughs> I don't want to be on the other side of it. <laughs> Kelly Clays, her jump serve, it almost to me looks like a hybrid. So she's a hybrid is mixed between a float serve and a jump topspin serve. So uh, taking account the, s the spins of the serves, a float serve right, is one that's like a knuckleball in baseball where the ball just hangs and moves around. Yeah, and top spin is where the ball is going to be seven. pulled down to the sand because of that spin. Now hers looks like it has a little bit of a float to it, so it's going to hit you higher in the chest. But she also does a little bit of the top and side spin, so it's going to dive right at the last second when you're trying to get underneath of it. I've been watching the angle at which she brings it for so many years. <laughs> I, I kind of echo your sentiments. I, I pity whoever has to serve receive whenever she's on the line. Or who's ever up for the block, even if it's Catherine Plummer at six foot six, because uh, just a devastating kill there from the reigning Pac-12 Player of the Year. And it's just so hard to know what to block against Clay's. Do you block the angle or do you block the line? Because she's able to pound both of them. Ray on the receiving end here and wide of the pin, just nowhere to go. Set just pushed a little too far outside from Plummer. A break here in the opening set on court number one. Clays and Hughes leading early. Congratulations to the Always a treat to have the number one ranked program in the country on our air on a gorgeous afternoon on the farm. 2-0 USC after the women of Troy got both matches of the opening flight. Three matches underway here in flight number two. It's Clays and Hughes leading on the top court. USC leading court two and Stanford leading court three. So we'll keep an eye on all of these matches. Looking for the best of five to clinch the duel and for USC to extend a 55 match winning streak overall. And Clay's receiving serve here on the top court and hitting that deep corner. And just making the easy play, not trying to do too much. I mean, you see so much open court in the back angle and she just does a nice job, not, not trying to crush it, just nice placement into that corner. Here's that serve you broke down. Picking out Jenna Gray and Catherine Plummer able to score on two. They're really trying to attack on two for Stanford. I mean, why not when you have a six foot six attacker on your side of the net? Bukovec and Wheeler with a 16-12 advantage in the two pairing. Clays and Hughes get another on court number one. As for the three pairs, it's close. Henson Keefe with a one-point advantage on Cannon and Martin. USC captain serving here on the top court. And with that dig, Glaze tucks it away. And just as soon as you put it over the net, the ball is coming right back at you with such a quick dig and transition on two. It's just so hard to play defense when the ball is coming back that fast. How about that block? Nice jumping into the angle there. And Plummer gets the kill. We didn't see Plummer doing as much of this last time we saw them against Cal. But Plummer is just making sure that she is recognized putting some balls away. I think the conditions play a part in that, right? Just more precise sets for her to crush? Yeah, you're 100% right. With the wind not playing as much of a factor, they're able to get that set just where they want it. But that goes for both USC and Stanford. So I love that we're seeing Plummer go up and just take a few more swings. They 
I've heard so much about this freshman tandem for the Cardinal. They apparently spend about 90% of their time together all seasons. One thing that uh, Coach Fuller said that they needed to work on moving forward from this weekend is that they needed to vary their service pressure. Either they were missing a few too many or they just weren't serving tough enough. And when you're going against USC, you've got to keep that serve tough and in the court. Uh, Bukovec and Wheeler going for the first set in this second flight. Side out Stanford. Ivana Vonyak and Peyton Chang, their opponents. Now that's a team that has really done some work for Stanford, 13 and four on the season. Now matching that five pair or just with their loss, now ahead of that five pair for Stanford in terms of record. Uh, Bukovec couldn't put that handset where she wanted it, but we'll go to set point number, no, on set point number three, that's the winner for Bukovec and Wheeler at 21-14. Uh, I don't think it was. Yeah, I, I was right the first time. They're going to continue on here in the opening set on court two. And so Vonyak serving. And she caught the line. So an ace serve for Ivana Vonyak to prolong this opening set and give us set point number six. Last time we got a chance to see this team, they did a phenomenal job of hitting the lines like no one I've ever seen before. Cross court with the kill. Ali Wheeler gives Bukovec the top, the first set over there on court number two at 21-15. Now it's final. And so back to court one, it's set point number one for Clays and Hughes. Must have side out here. And the Cardinal <laughs> get it. Plummer emphatically. Oh, and I just love seeing that. What a phenomenal set from Jenna Gray. Just up and down right in the middle of the court, similar to a two ball on the indoor side. One of the most fun sets to be able to hit. See if Clays can put it away. She does. Kelly Clays pockets the opening set on the top court, 21-14. And it may not have been as aggressive, but again, Kelly Clay is just finding the open court, making the simple play, and getting that first set win. The women of Troy also leading on court number three with Therese Cannon and Nicolette Martin. So in good shape here in this second flight after taking both matches of the first. For this USC pairing, one thing that's really neat at that number one is that because they have the ability to win pretty decisively in most of their competitions. Collier said they've been able to really adjust and change the way they approach each match. So now moving into the second set, you may see them against Jenna Gray and Plummer. Even though they're doing a really great job, they are going to try and work on some stuff. So some of the things they're working on, angle pulling, angle blocking. Hold that thought for set number two on the top court. Let's go over to pair three. Cannon and Martin with a four-point lead. And it looks like it's Therese Cannon, the junior from Pittsburgh, New York, ready to serve as we get back underway. Now, oh, good hustle from the Cardinal, but the point to the women of Troy. Coach Collier loves the chemistry and just the, the physical dynamic on this court. What does she like so much about the pairing of Cannon and Martin? She loves the fact that this is a true dedicated blocker and defender pairing. So it makes it really fun. You either are gonna get, you're gonna serve the ball at Therese and get the ball shoved down your throat or you're gonna serve the ball at Nicolette and you're gonna have to put on your track shoes is exactly what Collier said to me. Um, Nicolette does a really nice job of shooting around the block. So as a defender, you're going to have to get your feet set and be ready to run down so many balls. And she saw their cannon serving and also running to net. And it works out for Henson Keefe at 16-12 on the change. It's another freshman pairing for this very young but emerging Stanford team. I like the way that Andrew 
Fuller phrased it for us in the opening segment of our program. You know, USC is already at the top, but Stanford has a really bright future in this sport. You can see how they'll both be titans in the Pac-12 and in the country before too long with Stanford joining USC. And now take into account that Fuller was an assistant at USC previously. He Two. knows what it looks like to build a program yep. and to build a beach program. And that's his goal here at Stanford is to build a beach program that is not only just a contender in the Pac-12, but also nationally. They'll let Martin with the serve. Yep, 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 yep. And now she'll get a swing. Keith, high line, and she scores. Now this is a pairing on the Stanford side that has really gotten better as the season has gone on. They started in that number four spot, moving to the number three spot, and it wasn't so much that the previous number three wasn't doing a good job. It was just that this team started to play so well, and in practice they kept winning and winning. So Andrew Fuller moved them to that three position about halfway through the season. How about that touch shot from Nicolette Martin? Just snuck it over the tape. And this is exactly what we're talking about. She has such a great read and being able to see that block and know she's moving backwards, I'm going to drop it right in front of her. And Canyon brings the serve. Here's Hentz. Off the block and down. Morgan Hentz used to be an attacker back in high school. Now she's the libero for the Stanford Cardinal on the indoor side. Uh, so it's fun to get to see her take a few swings at the ball and and train her ball control just beyond her platform. On two, side out, USC. Now with pairings that have a more defensive set player and an offensive set player, a blocker, you're gonna see a lot of option plays so that that big, tall attacker gets the swing. They both have really great serves too, both Cannon and Martin. And that's down for another point for the women of Troy. Chance to take the opening set. They are doing a nice job of changing up their shots, hitting that left side and the right side, moving the ball around. So the Stanford Cardinal cannot start to guess. Nicolette Martin brings set point number one, unreturnable, and it's 21-14 for the three pair of USC. And the women of Troy take the opening sets across all three courts of flight number two here on the farm, Pac-12 Beach Volleyball. Every athlete has a 12 network. USC took both matches at the opening flight, and they took the first set of all three matches here in flight number two. So they're in position to extend their 55 match winning streak here at Stanford. The top pair of Clays and Hughes won the opening set, but they trail in the second set. We'll get there momentarily. Just wanted to show you the action on courts two and three as well, where the women of Troy, again, took the opening set on each. All right, so let's go to court one. Clays and Hughes against Plummer and Gray. Now it's important to note the score at this point, as Plummer and Gray have taken a 10-4 lead, now 10-5 over USC, something that is not a position that they're usually used to. As for Bukovec and Wheeler, 21-16 in the opening set, 11-5 as we keep track of the score on court two. Get you there for the conclusion. Cameron Irwin, JB Long with you today at Stanford. And again, this top pair for USC and the women of Troy, they've been off since having their streak snapped at the USAV Beach Collegiate Challenge in Manhattan Beach by a pair from St. Mary's and 10 days ago, really windy conditions. But is there a silver lining to that loss in their pursuit of another pair's title? Could that be a good thing in some way? I talked to Coach Collier about this and she said that they didn't really have much of a response. Now they were disappointed, but it actually took a little bit of the pressure off of this team. Uh, I, I was watching some interviews about that streak from the student athletes themselves, and they said that, you know, they don't really pay attention to that streak. But if you're on 103, I'm pretty sure you're aware that you're, you're on 103 of a win streak. So taking that pressure off and 
now being able just to play a little bit more freely and not worry about anything besides just getting better and being more even more consistent than they already are. On the second attempt, able to get over the block of Catherine Plummer. And of course, it helps to lose on the top court in the context of a team win. This softens the blow individually, of course. It does. It was a different position for them to be in. Usually, they're the ones putting up the Ws and being able to support those their team with those points. So it was a little bit of a tit for tat in terms of support from the rest of their teammates saying, hey, you took an L, but we got your back. We have the rest of the four wins. Another look at the serve of Kelly Clays as she peels off now. Able to get that dig. Just a tough position for the over. So Plummer and Gray in good position here midway through this second set. But do not count out USC. They've had a few tough matches where they were able to still pull out wins. One in particular was against Arizona State where they went to three and were down in the third 10-8 and came back to win it. So they are tested in really tight situations and they can still come out ahead. Uh, joust and it goes to the women of Troy. Let's see what happened here. Oh, with a one-handed left block. She's just st keeping her eyes on the ball to be able to keep that one on Stanford's side. And another stuff. Kelly Clay's imposing her will and bringing USC back within 12-9 at the second set break here on court number one at Stanford. You need tires. You don't need a 12 network. Pac-12 Beach Volleyball is brought to you by State Farm. Get to a better state. Cameron Irwin and J.B. Long back on the farm as we continue with the second flight. Women of Troy and Cardinal today in Pac-12 Beach Volleyball. Best of five wins. We're going to focus on the two pairing here and a closer look at Ivana Vonyak of Stanford along with Peyton Chang. They've, they've won six in a row and their last three matches have been decided in three sets and they're trying to keep that trend going by taking the second off of Bukovec and Wheeler of USC. They usually say that that third set is anybody's game, but if you've won six in a row, that says something about you as a pairing. Being able to put together those three set wins is just so challenging. You get into that third set and you've got to pay attention not only to the tendencies from one and two, but you've got to be able to execute at that point. Uh, first meeting between these programs, and we flash back to last year in Gulf Shores, and USC claimed another national championship. This time it was an NCAA championship. And my goodness, Clays, I told you she can hit hard angle, and man, she can hit line. It's so hard to know what to block against her. What a neat opportunity for these girls to have so many national championships under their belt, aiming for that third and consecutive this season. And then into the waves for the winning plunge. They have not lost since 25 and 0 this season. We're looking ahead to May 5th through 8th, Gulf Shores, Alabama. And the NCAA's 90th and newest championship, Cameron. And I just can't wait to be there. I'm excited to get to cover this event from the sidelines, get to dive into these programs even more and hear what their stories are really all about. All right, so back, ready to go on court number two. Block up with Wheeler and over the top, Devonavanya. Able to beat it. She clips a line. Coach Fuller said that Vonyak's game translates so well from the indoor to the beach. She's an outside attacker, so she's got passing ability, and she also has just a really nice, solid approach into the ball. Wheeler able to find a spot. Side out USC. One more thought on Vonyak. You know, she's teamed with her teammate Chang here, and then Catherine Raquel as well, and Maddie Bug as well throughout her outdoor career, now a redshirt junior. They pick her out on the serve. Another perfect shot. 
And just what a stroke on that ball. That was a beautiful arm swing. Just pulls that elbow back, strokes the side of the ball, and gets it to just turn cross court. Right. Reminded me of a, a winning ping pong shot. And she did play table tennis in Germany. I feel like I've got to see some film on that to believe it. Basketball, too. I wonder if she takes some kids on at the rec here at Stanford. Modern day product, Peyton Chang, her teammate, who is beach blogging for the Cardinal. Her latest installment, she actually interviewed her coaching staff. Got some insight on their lives and careers. Check it out on GoStanford.com. Bump set here. Stanford in system, unable to capitalize. Wheeler with the block. And one thing that USC is doing on this court right now is they are actually lining up their block to look like they're going to block one way, and then they're dropping into that angle. So look like I'm going to block line, drop into the angle, and that's how they're actually able to get a lot of blocks. And it's also happening a lot on court one for Clays and Hughes, too. The back corner. Perfectly placed, Sophie Bukovac, the senior from Toronto via Long Beach State. And coming back from an injury that's had her on and off the court since late March. Need to point out again that this top-ranked USC team and roster and lineup is back at full strength with what you would consider their opening day pairings on the court today at Stanford. Yeah, you're seeing lineups that beat teams like UCLA and Pepperdine at the very start of the season. This is, according to Anna Collier, their toughest lineup. Uh, they can clinch the duel here with match point number two on court number two. Wheeler blocks and poked perfectly. Ivana Vanyak keeping the Cardinal alive. And just a heads up play. That's a really tough play as a blocker to get a touch, then have to come down, find the ball again, and for this one, able to put the ball away and get the point. Here comes Wheeler. Oh, what a get by Stanford. Nice pick up by Jang. And now it's Bukovic's turn. Oh, the Cardinal giving it everything here to extend this set and the match and the duel, but not enough. The women of Troy have clinched it. Stanford just would not let up on that point, and that's what you want to see from your pairings, even as they are taking the loss there. They're just fighting, fighting, fighting. Love it. So 56 duels in a row now for the women of Troy as they clinch the duel, and now they go for the sweep on courts one and three. Let's rejoin the top-ranked pairing in the country, Clays and Hughes. And a tight one, second set. Catherine Plummer and Jenna Gray there with a kill. And like I said, don't count them out. USC has just made their way right back into this set. So Gray back to serve, tied at 18. Choosing Hughes. Sarah Hughes caught the line. Sarah Hughes is only 5'10", but one thing you notice is when you watch her play, she doesn't appear that way. She can just jump out of the sand. She plays so much bigger than she is. Brings the float serve now. A good recovery by Clays. Pick up. What a scramble by USC. Now Gray's turn. Oh, again, Hughes lays out, but the Cardinal get it to tie it once more. Sarah Hughes is just a defensive wonder. That last one just slipping in front of her, but you got to note the other two she had before in the play. So the serve belongs to Plummer and the Cardinal. Hughes cross court, another line shot. And it takes the women of Troy to 20. Sets up match point. Stanford tried to bait them there. But, man, I just would have loved to have seen Gray stay a little bit more steady in her defensive position. She started to move early thinking she had had the read on Sarah Hughes. But Sarah Hughes, if there's one thing to know about her, you're not really going to be able to just pick up a read that easy. 
All right, during the break here, let's take a look at the USC Beast of the Week. Cameron, walk us through this. Now, this is something for USC that has just been such a big piece of their offseason. Beast of the Week refers to the number one player from their team that has done the job in the weight room. Now, if you take a closer look at these photos, you will see Kelly Dormandy, their strength and conditioning coach, flexing on the front of a camo t-shirt. Now, talking to Anna Collier, she said they have to just absolutely demonstrate incredible strength, incredible conditioning, and be able to just take it to the next level, which is what USC's goal is every single year. Take it to the next step. And these girls just absolutely fight over that t-shirt every week. I know no one who's ever played the sport would make this mistake, but because it's outdoors and music's playing and it feels so casual, I think we can overlook the strength and conditioning component of this sport, but the fittest are often the victorious tandem. Well, like I said before, their 45-minute warm-up to some looks like a whole practice. Mm -hmm. uh, before this match, I was talking to Anna about their fitness, and she said that by the time they step onto the court, it's, it becomes easy. It, they don't have to work as hard in terms of that strength and conditioning. They're not getting winded like other teams. Go, go, go. Oh, what a scramble. He was able to get it over. And Cardinal extending the match. And you hear the Stanford fans rallying right now. You, they really want to see their number one pairing pick up a set win against I wouldn't the object National. to a third step, but no, step between this not pairing the way here. They're playing. It's been great beach volleyball. Gray has the serve. They've been going at Hughes. Block falls off and she hits the seam. Now that shot is actually more impressive than just your first look at it. The pass was off the net, meaning Clay's had to step back get her a nice set, which was still just a bit off the net. So she's having to take a swing about five to six feet off the net. Court vision at that point definitely decreases. Must have side out here for Stanford. Hughes read it well. How about that? What a clinic Sarah Hughes put on late in this second set. Sarah Hughes and Kelly Clays are just true competitors. They will do whatever it takes to pick up the win. And there you see just Sarah Hughes making her mark on that match. So 25 and one in duels now this season as a pair bouncing back from their only loss four nothing USC in the updated duel score and only one match left to decide. It's over on court number three. Uh, Therese Cannon and Nicolette Martin took the opening set, and we joined them here in the second final match of the day. Bump set from Keith. And it scores from Morgan Henson, the Cardinal. Well, a 25 and 0, but coming off a 10-day layoff. If you had any question about the form that the women of Troy would be bring back to the final extended week of the regular season, I think asked and answered. They have been tremendously sharp. Now USC needs to be careful here. They've dropped two points, putting themselves just in a little bit of a predicament. Two points out for Keith and Hence to be able to square up that score. Keith serving here. Here comes Hence. And the block, but I think net contact. Yeah, it looks like Cannon just got a little bit too aggressive on that yep. block. Yep, you see it there. She's trying to get the ball before it even comes over the net, touching that net with her wrist. Okay, so the roll continues for Henson Keefe. This serve, they have a chance to tie it at 16 seconds set. This is a team Coach Fuller said he has never had to be so concerned about one team running into a here, pole here, here, before. Here. 
They love the long rallies. They love getting after it on defense. And that can really put up a challenge for USC. Now, Therese Cannon scoring there to protect the lead in the second set for USC. Teaming with Nicolette Martin, who's a senior, and she's a fine arts major at USC as well. And Cameron was kind enough to track down some of her artwork, which we're going to take a look at here before this set is completed. I've often heard about the work she's done for the Roski School of Art and Design. Looking forward to seeing some of that. And they extend their lead now out to 18-15. Anaheim product back to serve. Uh, nicely done by Morgan Hentz, first year player from Lakeside Park, Kentucky. Kentucky Gatorade Player of the Year and Miss Kentucky Volleyball 2015. Smart play by Hentz. That's one of the toughest balls in beach volleyball to pick up. That short shot right over the block down the line. Uh, that serve was out. <laughs> Martin with quite a celebration there for a service miscue. Well, let's take a closer look at that artwork that you brought for us. I mean, just what incredible talent. Now you're seeing um, some volleyball pieces here. And the one on the lower left was actually done off of a live model in class. So Nicolette Martin hopes to one day work for the animation studios at Disney, which is, I mean, what a cool career choice. Now specializes in graphite and pencil sketch drawings, but also well-versed in photography and paints. Uh, Cannon looking to go on two there, was blocked. And it's Henson Keefe's turn to celebrate. Back within two as this second set winds down. Will there be a third for the first time today between SC and Stanford? And Keefe serving Martin. And Stanford, oh, it's USC's. It caught the line, my mistake. And it sets up match point number one. Nice shot by Martin going down the middle of the court, and especially when that blocker's pulling. That middle is very difficult to defend. So Martin serving for the match. Got to go here, and they do. Picked up by Hentz. And put down by USC, Therese Cannon with the final points. 21-14, 21-17. It's a sweep, all five in two sets to USC today at Stanford. And just to watch this team play and to go about their business, they appear to just have so much fun when they play. And you saw it there at the end of the match. They got a nice little handshake in there, and I saw even a little bit of a dab. I mean, these girls know how to compete, but they also know how, how to have fun when doing it. And that's one of the main characteristics for this USC beach volleyball team. Uh, they've got a monster set against Long Beach State and Bakersfield on Thursday, then Cal Poly and UCLA on Saturday before we see the reigning champs in Tucson at the Pac-12 Championships. As for Stanford, playing its seventh consecutive home match today, unable to get a match victory, but they'll take a trip to Arizona and ASU before continuing on to Tucson for the Pac-12s. 5-0, top-ranked USC extends their dual winning streak to 56 matches. For Cameron, I'm MJB. Thank you for being with us for Pac-12 Beach Volleyball. 5-0, women of Troy stay perfect. Now join this program already in